contact. Good morning students. Let us begin our discussion on isoperimetric problems which is a part of calculus of variations. In isoperimetric problems we find the extremals for an integral subject to one or more constraints. We have to find the differential equation that must be satisfied by a function y of x that gives a stationary value to the integral i equal to integral x1 to x2 integral x1 to x2 f of x y y dash dx where y is subject to the given side conditions. The constraints may be finite side conditions which do not involve integrals or derivatives or integral side conditions of the form j equal to integral x1 to x2 g of x y y dash dx equal to c where c is some constant. Now let us consider the origin of the term isoperimetric problem. This is due to the original isometric problem which was proposed by the ancient Greeks. The problem was that of finding the closed plane curve of given length that encloses the largest area. This problem was called the isoperimetric problem as the name indicates. They were able to prove that a circle is the required solution. Let us formulate the original isoperimetric problem mathematically. Let the parametric representation of the closed curve be x equal to x of t, y equal to y of t where t varies between t1 to t2 that is the closed curve is traversed counterclockwise as t increases from t1 to t2. Then the area enclosed by the curve is given by a equal to half of integral t1 to t2 x dy by dt minus y dx by dt. If you are not familiar with this formula, we can see that it follows from the Green's theorem in the plane which states that the round integral over C pdx plus q dy equal to double integral over A dou q by dou x minus dou p by dou y dA where A is the region enclosed by the curve C. Here taking p equal to minus y and q equal to x this become round integral over c x dy minus y dx equal to 2 times double integral over a da. Now we know that double integral over a da is the area enclosed by the curve a so you get a equal to half of integral round c x dy minus y dx and substituting the above parametric form we get equation 1 for the area enclosed by the curve. Since the length of the curve is L equal to integral t1 to t2 root of dx by dt whole square plus dy by dt whole square dt in the parametric form the problem is to maximize area A subject to the condition that equation 2 must have a constant value. So this is the reason for the name isoperimetric problem for problems involving the extremizing an integral subject to another constraint. Now let us consider the geodesic problem. 
the geodesic problem is the problem of finding the shortest curve joining two fixed points on a given surface and lying entirely on that surface. Let g of x, y, z equal to 0 be a given surface. A curve on the surface is determined parametrically by three functions x equal to x of t, y equal to y of t, z equal to z of t that satisfy equation 3 and the problem of finding geodesics amounts to the problem of minimizing the arc length integral integral t1 to t2 square root of dx by dt whole square plus dy by dt whole square plus dz by dt whole square dt subject to the side condition 3. So this belong to the category of isoperimetric problem. Now consider the method of Lagrange multipliers which you are already familiar with. In elementary calculus we consider the problems in which we want to find the points x, y that yield stationary values for a function is said equal to f of x, y where the variables are constrained by the equation g of x, y equal to 0. Then we form the function capital F of x, y lambda equal to small f of x, y plus lambda into g of x, y using the above two functions and investigate its unconstrained stationary values by means of the necessary conditions dou by dou x of capital F equal to dou by dou x of small f plus lambda dou g by dou x equal to 0 dou by dou y of capital F equal to dou by dou y of small f plus lambda dou g by dou y equal to 0 and dou f by dou lambda equal to g of x y equal to 0. Here the parameter lambda is called a Lagrange multiplier. If we eliminate lambda from equations 6 and 7, for this we multiply equation 6 by dou g by dou y equation 7 by dou g by dou x and subtracting we get dou g by dou y dou f by dou x minus dou g by dou x into dou f by dou y equal to 0 that is dou f by dou x minus dou f by dou y multiplied by dou g by dou x by dou g by dou y equal to 0 and g of x y equal to 0 which was equation 8. Solving these two equations we get the required point x y. This method is known as the method of Lagrange multipliers. This method can be extended to problems involving functions of more than two variables with several side conditions. Let us consider a problem using the method of Lagrange multipliers discussed above. Find the point on the plane ax plus by plus cz equal to d which is nearest to the origin. Here we have to minimize the distance of the point x, y, z to the origin that is you have to minimize root of x square plus y square plus z square. For convenience, we take the minimizing function f of x, y, z equal to x square plus y square plus z square subject to the constraint that the point belong to the plane ax plus by plus c, z equal to d. So here the side condition is g of x, y, z equal to ax plus by plus c, z minus d equal to 0. So capital F equal to small f plus lambda g equal to x square plus y square plus z square plus lambda into ax plus by plus cz minus d. 
here do by do x of capital F equal to 2x plus lambda a equated to 0 do f by do y equal to 2y plus lambda b is equated to 0 and do f by do z equal to 2z plus lambda c is equated to 0. Thus we get x equal to minus a lambda by 2, y equal to minus b lambda by 2 and z equal to, sorry it is z equal to minus c lambda by 2. Substituting in the constraint we get minus lambda by 2 into a square plus b square plus c square equal to d. We have substituted in the side condition g of x, y, z equal to 0. Thus lambda equal to minus 2 d by a square plus b square plus c square and so we get the required point is x equal to a d by a square plus b square plus c square y equal to b d by a square plus b square plus c square and z equal to c d by a square plus b square plus c square. Now let us consider the problem isoperimetric problems including integral side conditions. Here we want to find the differential equation that must be satisfied by a function y of x that gives a stationary value to the integral i equal to integral x1 to x2 f of x y y dash dx where y is subject to the side condition j equal to integral x1 to x2 g of x y y dash dx equal to constant c and assumes prescribed values y of x1 equal to y1 and y of x2 equal to y2 at the end points. We will assume that y of x is the stationary function and disturb it slightly to find the desired analytic condition. This is similar to that we have done to derive the Euler's equation in part 2 of calculus of variations. Since we have to maintain the integral j at the constant value c, we consider a two parameter family of neighboring functions y bar of x equal to y of x plus alpha 1 eta 1 of x plus alpha 2 eta 2 of x where eta 1 of x and eta 2 of x have continuous second derivatives and vanish at the end points. The parameters alpha 1 and alpha 2 are not independent but are related by the condition that j of alpha 1 alpha 2 equal to integral x1 to x2 g of x y bar y bar dash dx equal to c. This follows because every element be belonging to the two parameter family also satisfy the constraint. Thus the prob problem reduces to that of finding necessary conditions for the function i of alpha 1 alpha 2 equal to integral x1 to x2 f of x y bar y bar dash dx to have a stationary value at alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0 where alpha 1 and alpha 2 satisfy j of alpha 1 alpha 2 equal to c. Now we apply the method of Lagrange multipliers and introduce the function k of alpha 1 alpha 2 lambda equal to i of alpha 1 alpha 2 plus lambda into j of alpha 1 alpha 2 which is equal to when we substitute i of alpha 1 alpha 2 and j of alpha 1 alpha 2 we have it is integral x1 to x2 f of x y bar y bar dash plus lambda g of x y bar y bar dash dx taking capital F equal to small f plus lambda g 
we can write k of alpha 1 alpha 2 lambda in the form integral x1 to x2 capital F of x y bar y bar dash dx. We investigate its unconstrained stationary value at alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0 by means of the necessary conditions dou k by dou alpha 1 equal to dou k by dou alpha 2 equal to 0 when alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0. We have dou k by dou alpha i equal to integral x1 to x2 dou by dou alpha i of f of x y bar y bar dash dx. Since y bar and y bar dash involves alpha i, we get this in the form integral x1 to x2 dou f by dou y bar eta i of x plus dou f by dou y bar dash eta i dash of x dx for i equal to 1 comma 2. Setting alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0 gives dou k by dou alpha i equal to integral x1 to x2 dou f by dou y eta i of x plus dou f by dou y dash eta i dash of x dx equal to 0 because when alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0 we have dou k by dou alpha i equal to 0 and also when alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to 0 y bar equal to y and y bar dash equal to y dash. Now to eliminate the term eta i dash of x in the second term we apply integration by parts and obtain integral x1 to x2 eta i of x into dou f by dou y minus d by dx of dou f by dou y dash dx equal to 0. Since eta 1 of x and eta 2 of x are both arbitrary, the two conditions above amount to a single condition that the stationary function y of x must satisfy the Euler equation d by dx of dou f by dou y dash minus dou f by dou y equal to 0. The solutions of this equation which are the extremals of our problem involve three undetermined parameters, two constants of integration and the Lagrange multiplier lambda. The stationary function is selected from these solutions by imposing the two boundary conditions and giving the integral j its prescribed value c. This result can also be extended to the case of integrals that depend on two or more functions. If i equal to integral x1 to x2 f of x y is said y dash z dash dx has a stationary value subject to the side condition j equal to integral x1 to x2 g of x y z y dash z dash dx equal to c then the stationary functions y of x and z of x must satisfy the system of equations d by dx of dou f by dou y dash minus dou f by dou y equal to 0 and d by dx of dou f by dou z dash minus dou f by dou z equal to 0 where as before capital F equal to small f plus lambda g. Now let us consider the solution of the original isoperimetric problem. We have to maximize i equal to half of integral t1 to t2 x y dot minus y x dot dt with the side condition j equal to integral t1 to t2 square root of x dot square 
plus y dot square dt equal to L where x dot denotes dx by dt and y dot denotes dy by dt. Here we have small f of t x y x dot y dot equal to half of x y dot minus y x dot and g of t x y x dot y dot equal to square root of x dot square plus y dot square. So capital F equal to small f plus lambda g equal to half of x y dot minus y x dot plus lambda into square root of x dot square plus y dot square. Here we get dou f by dou x equal to y dot by 2 dou f by dou y equal to minus x, x dot by 2 dou f by dou x dot equal to minus y by 2 plus lambda x dot divided by root of x dot square plus y dot square and dou f by dou y dot equal to x dot by 2 plus lambda y dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square. So the Euler equations are d by dt of minus of y dot by 2 plus lambda x dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square minus y dot by 2 equal to 0 and d by dt of x dot by 2 plus lambda y dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square plus x dot by, by 2 equal to 0. Now direct integration of the above equations give minus y plus lambda x dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square equal to say constant minus c1 and x plus lambda y dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square equal to c2. Thus x minus c2 equal to minus of lambda y dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square and y minus c1 equal to lambda into x dot divided by square root of x dot square plus y dot square. Squaring and adding we get x minus c2 whole square plus y minus c1 whole square equal to lambda square. Thus we get the maximizing curve is a circle. Now in this session we have discussed the general isoperimetric problem and the solution using the method of Lagrange multipliers and solved the original isoperimetric problem. We will discuss the solution of the geodesic problem using this method in the next session. Thank you.